lesson 73, formulas for sequence. Here you can see we have two different types of sequences. We have arithmetic sequence and we have a geometric sequence. As a review, when we went through arithmetic sequence, you are adding the same number each time between each term. With geometric sequences, you are multiplying the same number each time between each term. So today we want to focus in on how to complete a sequence using a formula. So here in the sample problems, they're going to give us a formula and then we're going to have to find a certain term that they're asking for. It says find the eighth and ninth terms of the sequence generated by the formula a subscript n equals 3n. And earlier when we had, when we talked about arithmetic and geometric sequences, we had stated that n is always the number of terms. So if we are trying to find the eighth term, this would be a subscript eight equals three times eight. Because we're trying to find the eighth term, n stands for the number of terms. Eight times three would give us 24. So our eighth term would be 24. To find the ninth term, I just put a nine wherever I see an n, and I would have three times n, or three times nine, so the ninth term would equal 27. The bottom here says find the next two terms in each sequence. But here they didn't give us a rule or a formula. So we have to determine what the formula is. And all I need to do is just look at the terms in here and determine how do I go from one term to the next. So I have 2, 4, 8, 16, and 32. Now there are a couple ways I can get to from 2 to 4. I can do 2 plus 2 gives me 4. I could also do 2 times 2 give me 4. Let's try to go from 4 to 8. If we're adding 2s, 4 plus 2 is not 8 because 4 plus 2 is 6, so I know it cannot be plus 2. 4 times 2 gives me 8. Does 8 times 2 give me 16? Yes, and 16 times 2 gives me 32. So that means the rule here is telling me I need to multiply by 2 each time. So that means 32 times 2 would give me 64. And then 64 times 2 would give us 128. The second one, we have 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8. Now to try to find this rule, you'll have to do a little bit a little more thinking on here. How do you go from a 1 to a 1? Well, you'd have to add 0. That would be the only way. How do you go from a 1 to a 2? Well, you could take 1 plus 1 to get you 2. You could do 1 times 2 to get you 2. The other one, go from 2 to 3. In order to get from 2 to 3, you would have to add 1. So, so far we have add, added 0. We've added 1 or multiplied by 2. Then we added 1 to go from 3 to 5. You'd have to add 2. But this one's a little bit unique. If I take 1 plus 1, that gives me 2. If I take 1 plus 2, that gives me 3. If I take 2 plus 3, that gives me 5. If I take 3 plus 5, that gives me 8. So the next term is adding the previous two terms. So to find the next term here, I would have to do 5 plus 8. And 5 plus 8 would give me 13. Then to find the next two terms, I would just need to add 8 and 13, and that would give me 
21. So that one's a little bit different kind of sequence because you're just adding the previous two terms. And it might take some time just to look at look it through and see what all the kinds of patterns you can have. And one of them will eventually work. Next one, we have 1, negative 2, 2, negative 1, 3, 0, 4. So for this one, we want to look at what are we doing each time. In order to get from a 1 to a negative 2, I could multiply by a negative 2. I could also subtract 3 from it. If I went from negative 2 to a positive 2, the only way to get it from a positive 2 is I multiplied by, multiplied by a, positive, a negative 1. I could also do negative 2 plus 4 would give me 2. And then going from 2 to a negative 1, I would have to subtract 3. So the first one, if we did... This one we subtracted 3. This next one we added 4. This next one we subtracted 3. This next one we added 4. This next one we added, we subtracted 3. And this last one we added 4. So you can start seeing we have a pattern here. We subtract 3, add 4. Subtract 3, add 4. Subtract 3, add 4. Now to go from, if we just added 4 in the last here, now we need to subtract 3. So if I subtract 3, that would give us a 1. Now we need to add 4. We add 4. That would give us 5. And you would just keep alternating back and forth there. One's on the right. Same so problems too. A rule for the sequence in the example A on the left-hand side, so the top one, or not the top one, uh, the one right here for A. You can use the rule A subscript 2 equals 2 to the nth power find the nth term in the sequence. So if I were to find the nth term, or the 10th term, I would put a 10 in for n and do 2 to the 10th power. 2 to the 10th power would be 1,024. Now if we were back to here, this is 2 to the 1st, this is 2 squared, this is 2 to the 3rd, this is 2 to the 4th, this is 2 to the 5th, and so on. So that's another way of coming up with the rule. We went with just multiplying by 2. So if the base is 2, we can just raise each term to the, to the power to find the next term. The next one says find the first three terms of the sequence given by the formula a subscript n equals 1 plus 2 times n. So the first three terms. If I want to find the first term, put a 1 in for n. So 1 plus 2 times 1 would give us 3. To find the second term, put a 2 in for n. And I get 1 times plus 2 times 2. So 4 plus 1 is 5. And then to find the third term, I put a 3 wherever I see an n. So I would have 1 plus 2 times 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 1 is 7. So there's another formula you can use with that sequence. A couple other ones. What is the seventh term of this sequence? So if we look at our terms, we got 1, 4, 9, 16. Now, in order to go from 1 to a 4, you're actually adding 3. From 4 to five, four to 9, you're adding 5. So that 9 to 7, you're adding 7. So 9 to 16, you're adding 7. 
you could continue that pattern, but you should also recognize these numbers, 1, 4, 9, 16. Those terms are perfect squares. So this is 1 squared, first term squared, second term squared, third term squared, fourth term squared. So if we're trying to find the seventh term, we would just do seventh term squared. And the seventh squared would give us 49. So 49 would be the seventh term of that sequence. The terms of the following sequence are generated with formulas a subscript n equals 5n minus 2. Find the tenth term. So we have 3, 8, 13, 18. That's the first four numbers of the term, the sequence. So we're trying to find the tenth term. So 5 times 10 minus 2 would give us the tenth term being 48. You also notice here, all they're doing is just adding 5 each time. So if you continued that that way, if you, did, if you didn't have this rule, but you notice that you're adding 5 each time, you could have done that. But the formula takes, takes away a lot of the, how long it takes to solve the problem. So it's a little bit quicker to solve. Next one, which formula belongs which formula below generates the term of the following sequence? So 0, 3, 8, 15. So if the first term is 0, and I want to find the first term, if I put a 0 in for n, do I get a 1? Does not work for this one, because 0 minus 1 is negative 1, and we have a 0 there. We put a 0 in for n here, put a 0 here, 2 times 0 is 0, 0 minus 1 is negative 1. So let's see, they're all going to equal negative 1, so we can't do that. Actually, we're not, not supposed to put the 1 in there, if I put the first term. This is the first term. So if I put a 1 in for the, we're trying to find the first term, put a 1 here. 1 minus 1 is 0. What if I put a 3 here? Or the second term. For the second term, 2 minus 1 is 1, not 3. So that's why this one can't be it. If I put in a 1 here and a 1 here, 2 times 1 is 2 minus 1 is 1, so I can't be this term because the first term has to equal 0. If I put a 1 for here and a 1 here, I have 1 squared is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. Our first term here is 0, so it has to be C. As A subscript N equals N squared minus 1. I could find, if I wanted to find the second term, the second term has to equal 3. I put a 2 in for n, 2 squared is 4, 4 minus 1 is 3. In the bottom here, it says find the first four terms of the sequence given by the formula a, n, a subscript n equals n squared plus 2n plus 1. So remember, n stands for the first term. So if I want to find the first term, put a 1 in, so 1 squared plus 2 times 1 plus 1. 1 squared is 1 plus 2 plus 1 gives us 4. A subscript 2, the two, second term, so 2 squared plus 2 times 2 plus 1. 2 squared is 4, 2 times 2 is 4, so that's 8 plus 1 is 9. Find the third, third term. 3 squared, 9, plus 2 times 3, so 6 plus 9 is 15, plus 1 equals 16. And the fourth term, 4 squared is 16, plus 2 times 4, that's 8, so 16 plus 8 is 24, plus 1, 
fourth term would equal 25. So again, that's another one with perfect squares. On our last couple problems, the numbers in this sequence are sometimes called triangular numbers. So 1, 3, 6, 10, 15. These are triangular numbers because these numbers of objects can be arranged in a triangular pattern, like you see here. You start with one, and then you just keep adding another for each layer that you put down. So the first term has one, the second term you add it to the third term, the bottom one has three, three, three dots on the bottom, the fourth term has four dots on the bottom, and so on. Triangular numbers can be found using this formula. A subscript to n equals n times n plus 1 divided by 2. If we want to find the tenth triangular number, we have 10 for the n, and I would have 10 times 10 plus 1 divided by 2. And so I would have, I could simplify this quickly, 10 divided by 2 is 5, and then I have 10 plus 11, 1 is 11. So the tenth term would give me 55. So if you were to complete the picture, the tenth term would have 55 dots in it. Find the twentieth triangular number, put a 20 in, you would have 20 times 20 plus 1 divided by 2. Simplify that. You can do 21 times 20 and then divide it by 2. I like to simplify everything on the outside first, so this would be 10, and then 20 plus 1 is 21. So I think 10 times 21 is a lot easier to do in my head. So the 20th term would be 210. So that is our lesson today on using formulas for sequences.